What is Appleface? Who is Appleface? Let's discuss. Appleface, a new design I created for my Lehman Magic brand. Now, if you look at it as a whole, it's on a stamp, which goes well on packaging, but as well, the idea of packaging, mail, tangible pieces, history, things we can feel and touch. Because in a digital world, a lot of that is being lost. So I love the idea of this tangible postage package nature, that classic idea, that passport feel where you got a ton of stamps. This thing has been places. Now, if you look at the origin of it, it's based on the surrealist Belgian painting by René Magritte, the Son of Man. You may have seen this image because it's in popular culture in a various amount of ways, but it's something I've enjoyed since high school. Let's rewind to 2022. It was November. I live in Buffalo and we got yet another snowstorm. We were snowed in for multiple days. Roads couldn't clear and it was kind of a pain in the butt. One of the things I did while we were snowed in was decided to rebrand my magic. So if you go to LehmanMagic.com, it's a slow process, but as far as my packaging, my detail, and how I wanted to conceptualize how everything was coming together, I created a new logo and a new aesthetic, kind of authentic to myself. And that is what Apple Face derived from. And Apple Face was originally meant to go on stamps. So that is kind of the general origin of Apple Face, came up with it during a snowed in snowstorm in Buffalo. The fact that the original painting has a green apple, like a Granny Smith apple, is convenient as well. I love the color green. I consider myself a green wizard. I mean, dragons have green skin in a lot of lore. You have Robin Hood and even Peter Pan, the boy who never grew up that can fly and just fights pirates. So all these ideas coming together for this green apple image of the son of man, but turned on its end with some pop art modernization with glasses and a fedora, another piece of my wardrobe that goes back to my grandfather and other key figures of history that I really look up to. So what does Apple Face mean? It's very easy to just slap a logo on a box, whether it's a lowercase a, e, whatever, just throwing it on there and saying, hey, it's cool, it's hip, it's authentic, look at it, whoa! But again, what does it mean to you as an artist, as an individual, as a brand, so to speak? Apple Face as a whole, when you look at it, it's a piece of art based on art. So it's perpetuating that. It's simulacra and simulation. It is what we are all living in, in the sense of things perpetuating each other and being created out of each other. But again, getting too far down the simulacra simulation trail, you're gonna get into idols just derived of meaningless things. And that's where you get. If it's meaningless, then what are you actually creating your art for? That is one of the brilliant metaphors of Apple Face, knowing some will duplicate because of the inspiration they have from the work. But of course, people can duplicate, they can replicate, but it's just imitators trying to chase what is already there. And anyone riding your coattails will be just steps behind because of course you are unique. So do unique things and be you, but also subtly knowing that the influence is more important than the person behind it. So what does this mean to me as a person? So the apple face, it's faceless. We are faceless men. We are living art. So you can go out there with your pride and your ego because magicians as a whole, the art form itself is based on that. Just marketing because it's generally a one person art. If you're going out there as a solo performance, obviously you gotta pitch yourself. You have to market yourself. So there's a little bit of ego there. But if we strip that away and can find the idea of we are faceless men, performing this art form, allowing for moments of happiness, joy, escapism from this reality that we all are confined to, then that is what our job is. We are faceless. We are facilitators of that art. We are shamans, so to speak. We are wise men. We are wizards. We are magi. We can help people see things they might not have before because they are constrained by the problems of dirty laundry and taxes and car problems and just all of the things of life. A prime example of this idea of us being faceless men in the magic community is think of magic shows. 
Generally, when people talk about a magic trick or a performance, they say, oh, this is a great trick. He made my card go into my wallet, whatever. But a lot of times, even the best magicians fall to the wayside and their name is lost because we are magi. We are magicians. That is our title. Us individually is not anything but all of our parts as a whole. We create magic. So if you take this idea of a whole as performing artists that we are faceless, go out there, do your best and give these moments, taking another form of art, you look at theater. Theater as a whole is based on you know comedy tragedy, this art form of struggle of good and evil as well. So taking that into account for the faceless men and the art form we provide, look at the Phantom of the Opera, an old story that was derived into theater by Andrew Lloyd Webber. And what is the general idea of that story? If you take the love triangle kind of out of that, it is a man who was obviously rescued from the sideshow, kind of performing in a cage as a slave, brought up by this very important, very kind of strict regimented teacher of ballet. And through that, living in the opera house, he just loved art. He loved the creation of theater and drama and opera. And he just wanted the opera to be great. So he wasn't about, I'm the phantom of the opera, but he left these notes, he left these letters, he left these clues to say, hey, the theater isn't doing great. This is what you should do. And it can be great. It will be great. We just need to be great. So that idea of the Phantom of the Opera, the masked man, the monster behind the mask, he just wants the opera to be great. And out of that comes love and tragedy, which again is all part of theater, opera, and the whole cosmos of art. As I mentioned earlier, you may have seen the original painting, Son of Man in some pop culture. Now thinking of the Thomas Crown Affair, he takes on this very idea of faceless men in the final scene. If you've seen it in the newer rendition with Pierce Brosnan, not the original 60s film, but he actually returns his stolen painting on the wall. Spoilers, but the way he does it is using a brigade of decoys of these faceless men. All these guys in bowler hats walking around in the same outfits, kind of depicting himself, but then he is able to slip into the crowd because he can change from the form that is being kind of sought after and as well as just like stalked kind of by the police in that instance. So the idea of being faceless men and becoming part of the crowd all while being part of the secret is a really important factor in our magic as well. Now I said I love this photo and going back to even some of my animation days, again, if you wanna see some of my animation, check out TMR Production Studios right here on YouTube. But going back to animation days, one of my first animations, Cloudy with a Chance of Chaos, based on Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, you can look in some of those photos where as literal college kids, we were just painting and creating sets out of cardboard and clay, things we could get at the craft shop. In the background there, two posters blazing on the wall. You have Illusionist, an amazing film, Edward Norton. If you haven't seen Illusionist, go out there, check it out. Great film that was like, it's a story made for film, kind of like King Kong. It isn't based on a book or a novel or a novella or a short story. You know, The Prestige, great, but it's based on something. Illusionist was a film story created for film. And that's a unique thing that we don't see that much of anymore. So going back, Cloudy with a Chance of Chaos, right there on the wall, see that image. And again, it's been kind of behind me and in my, my mind, in my back burner, if you will, this whole time. And November 2022 is when it finally came out and became part of this thing and part of my art. And it's just been an amazing journey trying to create this logo. And it's just a logo. And you might see it and go like, whoa, whatever. But it is something that through time evolved and is part of some of the ethos of what I think. So, so that's what it is. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. So the whole brand itself, thinking of adventure, travel, package, tangible history. It's an amazing thing that I'm trying to bring together. And if you see or purchase anything on Lehman Magic, you might get your package 
bound up in that brown paper package, like classic shipping, and it's gonna have all those stamps and they're all meaning something, whether it's the Polish stamp with my heritage going all the way back to my grandfather, which again, is some of one of my first fedoras I got was from my grandfather. And it's gonna take on this Carmen San Diego vibe of where in the world are these coming from? Who is it coming from? And I think as a whole, as an art form, as magic, that's gonna be really great. And I'm excited to see where else it goes in the future. Again, I'm gonna talk a lot more about this on my channel, but for now, that's kind of the origin of Apple Face and just giving you some insight of where that came from. To follow my trail, check out my social media, whether it's Ryan.Lehman on Instagram or my official Ryan Lehman on Facebook or right here on YouTube. Check out more videos and I'm gonna do more video diaries kind of like this and talk about some of the lore, history of theme parks, as well as magic and performance art. So we'll see you on another sit and talk kind of like this, and I will see you in pictures.